I mean, if you think uh, when Brian first took on X Men One, Wolverine. He's an X Man. Do you do all your own acting? It's it's true. The incredible you, Jackman, is here. And the Emmy goes to Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman! The character that allowed me to get this award would rather die than be up here on this stage. But uh, for Wolverine, uh, there wouldn't be a Wolverine movie, so I want to thank you very much. I'm sorry, Ellen, I didn't expect it. I really didn't. The boy from Oz. And I went up to a girl that I really talked to twice, and I said, Sarah, hi. Um, I, I just want to tell you this, I really love you. If there's sex scenes, I'd do them. Go walk yourself, bird. And uh, it, would it be possible for me to kiss you? The Australian leading man whose versatility and inherent talent have graced our screens and stages over the last three decades. Yeah, I feel the Wolverine fans are like, finally, something. Hugh Jackman, an entertainer of the highest order, has had a thrilling journey from his early beginnings as a soap opera star to landing a string of movies with a collective gross of more than $5 billion worldwide. But beyond the glitz and glam of being Hollywood royalty, Hugh Jackman identifies as a devoted husband and loving father for whom family trumps career any day. As paradoxical as it sounds, the megastar has become one of the industry's finest actors while establishing himself as a charming and thoughtful family man, a down-to-earth spiritual seeker. My training, uh, I suppose, spiritually, has gone from church to a, a place called the School of Practical Philosophy, where I've studied for many years. And a true humanitarian through and through. More than 20 years after he first took Hollywood by storm, it's amazing to look back on Jackman's early inspirations, his meteoric rise to fame, and his philanthropic efforts, all of which have made him the inspirational man he is today. Join us as we unravel the paradox of Hugh Jackman's multifaceted persona, not to object, but to reflect, not to doubt, but to learn. Also, it seems The Prestige pulled a disappearing act in our last video, The Christian Bale Paradox, and you guys were not amused. Well, hold on to your popcorn, because we've listened, and this time, we're giving The Prestige the spotlight it deserves. Stick around till the end. Do not miss a moment, and we promise, no magic tricks, just movie magic. Sydney, 1968. Hugh Michael Jackman was born to British immigrant parents who came to Australia in hopes of better opportunities. The youngest of five children, he was eight when his parents separated and his mother moved back to England, leaving him to be raised by a single father, a Cambridge-educated accountant. Jackman's close relationship with his father would eventually shape his personality and deeply impact his personal as well as professional life. He taught me really great values, the actor recalled during an early 2023 interview with The Guardian. He was never really interested in things like fame and money. He was always encouraging about education and treating people well and keeping your word. Jackman's father would visit him on set, occasionally giving him a thumbs up and sometimes unknowingly influencing his decisions as an actor and a father. In fact, Jackman believes a lot of who he is today is because of his father. In his 2006 interview with Oprah, Hugh also said, To this day, I am the least materialistic person I know because my father didn't raise me to just go out and buy this or that car. As a child, Jackman went to Pimble Public School before attending the all-boys Knox Grammar School, where he discovered his taste and talent for acting for the very first time. In 1985, he starred in the school's production of My Fair Lady, but he truly fell in love with theater during his trips to visit his mother in England, where he also worked as a physical education teacher during his gap year. Jackman later returned to his hometown and studied journalism at the University of Technology, Sydney, 
where he took a drama course during his final year. In that one week of playing the lead on stage, he felt more at home than he did the entire three years at university. Intrigued by his performance, Jackman made the life-altering decision to enroll in acting school and planned to pay for it using an inheritance from his grandmother. This was a major milestone in the budding star's life because up to this point, he had not even contemplated the idea of trying his luck at the theater. It wasn't until he was 22 that he started thinking about acting as something he could make a living out of, rather than just a hobby. According to Jackman, he always had an interest in theater as a boy, but the idea at his school was that drama and music weren't something people did for a living. However, he got over that and found the courage to stand up and say, I want to do it. Unsurprisingly, a young Jackman sought his father's advice on the matter. He said, I couldn't think of a better way for you to use it, but I have some concerns. And I said, you don't think I'm good enough? And he said, oh, I think you're good enough, but I think you're too thin-skinned. Years later, Jackman would go on to admit that his father was right, not once but multiple times. In 2013, for instance, the Australian star said, I don't read reviews, I'm too thin-skinned. According to him, it's something he acquired from the theater, where reviews, whether good or bad, can easily mess up an actor. Jackman later elaborated on his quality of being thin-skinned in an industry that teaches actors and celebrities in general to be ruthless with ambition and unsusceptible to negative criticism. According to Jackman, he doesn't necessarily see sensitivity and vulnerability as weakness, which is something that separates him from his contemporaries and reinforces his likability in the public eye, he says. It's a strength as an actor, he says. Thin-skinned is sensitivity, which is something you need, and I know school, and I'm still learning to cope with it. Hugh Jackman was only three months into studying theater at the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts in Perth, YPA, when he was offered a role in the long-running soap opera, Neighbors. But the gig required his undivided dedication for two years, and Jackman wasn't sure if he wanted to drop drama school. By that time, he had developed a strong desire to audition for Broadway and the Royal Shakespeare Company someday. He asked it himself, after two years on a soap opera, will I feel like I deserve an audition at the Royal Shakespeare Company? The answer was no. So, Jackman decided to continue his classes and meticulously followed his father's advice. Education is the one cure-all for insecurity. If you feel insecure about something, prepare for it. Even when he was close to graduating from drama school, Hugh Jackman still didn't know for certain that acting was for him. Then 26 years old, he made a pact with himself to try acting for five years. According to Jackman, he had already spent eight years working in restaurants and gas stations. So, he had seen enough small businesses to understand that that's what acting is, a small business. He realized he'd have to put everything into it before he could say he got a chance. Fortunately, on the night of his final Academy graduation performance, Jackman received a phone call, providing him with a big opportunity and ensuring he wasn't unemployed for more than 13 seconds. 1995, Hugh Jackman landed his first major professional job on ABC's 10-part prison drama, Corelli. This is where he met his future wife, Deborah Lee Furness, and according to the actor, it was the greatest thing he received from the project. Although Corelli only lasted for one season, it paved the way for Jackman's stage musical career in Melbourne, where he portrayed Gaston in the local Walt Disney production of Beauty and the Beast and Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard. In 1998, he played the lead in the Royal National Theatre's stage production of Oklahoma in London's West End Theatre. According to Jackman, he felt like it can't get any better than this. On some level, that production will be one of the highlights of my career. The performance earned him an Olivier Award nomination for Best Actor in a Musical. And the Emmy goes to Hugh Jackman. Woo! More importantly, it put him on Hollywood's radar. Now, this may come as a shock to many, but Hugh Jackman has never been too fond of singing. Despite being known for his stage musicals quite early in his career, the Australian performer struggled with singing during his first audition. And even though he later became known as a triple threat, a successful actor, dancer, and singer, Jackman had to take lessons to refine his musical skills. I may be the only actor in history to have a contract with this clause 
must take singing lessons every week. I was suddenly doing eight shows a week and taking lessons for an entire year. Who wouldn't get better if you worked that hard? Even though he was born to thrive on stage, Jackman always preferred the acting part of the job over the singing. To this day, he still feels a slight sigh of relief when a song is over and he's performed through it fairly well. 2000, the year Hugh Jackman turned to film and landed his breakthrough role, which allowed him to become an iconic part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not to mention a bankable action star. He turned heads with his Hollywood debut in Bryan Singer's X-Men, portraying the claw-wielding mutant Wolverine. Interestingly, the role was originally intended for Russell Crowe, but the Oscar winner declined and recommended Jackman instead. The role was then offered to Doug Gray Scott, who initially accepted it, but later backed out because of prior commitments to Mission Impossible 2. Scott later revealed that Tom Cruise didn't allow him to play Wolverine. At last, Brian Singer approached the relatively unknown Jackman, who had some reservations about the role. His wife even called it ridiculous, and back then, such a part was a risky gamble that could have led to career-ending typecasting. However, it all worked out. Not only did he embrace the characteristics of Wolverine, but also hit the gym to work on his physique. After intense training, Hugh was now a jacked man. He truly made Wolverine his own and portrayed the character so flawlessly that even 23 years later, MCU fans are still asking for more. To prepare for the role, Jackman reportedly drew inspiration from Clint Eastwood in the Dirty Harry movies and Mel Gibson in Mad Max 2. Explaining his approach, Jackman said, There were guys who had relatively little dialogue like Wolverine had, but you knew and felt everything. Um, I'm not normally one to copy, but I wanted to see how these guys achieved it. Once he figured out how to convey the emotion, Jackman's next challenge was understanding Wolverine's mannerisms. To achieve this, he not only studied wolves, but also martial arts, determined to perform his own stunts. The actor watched and analyzed countless Mike Tyson fights, aiming to make his action sequences as raw and animalistic as possible. Jackman also wore Wolverine's claws to familiarize himself with the character. Every day in his living room, he would simply walk around with those claws, even after they resulted in multiple scars on his leg, cheek, and forehead. Additionally, he underwent rigorous physical training, at one point even bench-pressing over 300 Thou Lauder Bs to attain the required muscle mass for the role. It's safe to say Hugh Jackman's efforts paid off. X-Men was a phenomenal success, earning nearly $300 million at the global box office. Although it wasn't the first live-action film about superheroes, it helped lay the foundation for the genre's ever-increasing popularity. The film also launched a mega-hit franchise spanning two decades and 13 movies, which grossed over $6 billion globally. Meanwhile, Jackman became a household name. He reprised his role as the conflicted, tortured hero in X2 X-Men, The Last Stand, and the 2009 prequel X-Men Origins Wolverine. During the 2010s, the leading man continued winning hearts even with his cameos in films like X-Men First Class, X-Men Days of Future Past, and X-Men Apocalypse. Jackman's iconic character also went on a standalone adventure in The Wolverine. The 2013 film was a critical and commercial success, grossing over $400 million at the box office and therefore becoming the fifth highest grossing movie in the film series. It also paved the way for the 2017 sequel, Logan, which once again gave Jackman the chance to put his investment in the character on full display. Perhaps the highlight of Jackman's career, Logan became the best-reviewed film in the X-Men franchise and one of the greatest superhero films of all time. It proved to be a worthy send-off for the character that launched and sustained Jackman's career for almost two decades. And it's safe to say, the actor made the most of the then-presumed Wolverine finale. His 17-year-long performance earned him the Guinness World Record for longest career as a live-action Marvel superhero. He also topped the Hollywood Reporter's list of the greatest superhero movie performances of all time. In early 2023, Jackman surprised fans when he announced he would be returning as Wolverine in Deadpool 3, 
which will star Ryan Reynolds in the lead and is set to release in May 2024. For all their success, the X-Men films have recently been brought into question by numerous allegations made against the original director, as well as reports of several misdemeanors on set. Since then, fans have been curious whether these issues have tainted X-Men's legacy for Jackman. There's a lot of things at stake there. X-Men was the turning point, I believe, in terms of comic book movies, and I think there's a lot to be proud of. And there are certainly questions to be asked, and I think they should be asked. Jackman added that he looks back at the franchise with pride at what we've achieved and what momentum that started. At the same time, he also thinks that things have changed for the better. There's way less tolerance for disrespectful, marginalizing bullying, any oppressive behavior. There's zero tolerance for it now, and people will speak out, and I think that's great. Hugh Jackman continued displaying his multi-talented arsenal outside of superhero films as well, eventually orchestrating a career with varied roles across multiple genres. Despite the mainstream success he found early on, the actor refused to rely only on his most bankable roles, as he didn't want to be known for only one type of character. Right from the beginning, what I loved about acting was the variety, so I thought, well, my approach is I'm going to hold as many doors open as possible, try to open them, and once they're open, try to hold them up for as long as I can. And his strategy worked. Jackman received a Best Actor Golden Globe nomination for his 2001 rom-com Kate and Leopold before winning the Tony Award for his 2003-2004 performance in The Boy From Oz. This hit musical was another highlight of Jackman's career, not only as a Broadway star, but also as a triple threat performer. It was the first time in his career that I'd felt such passion and conviction, and later that translated into moments of full freedom and the feeling of being at home on stage. At that point, Jackman also realized that his litmus test is conviction. I'm not saying everything I do will be successful, but I can live with a failure if it is born of conviction. Following his praiseworthy performance as Peter Allen, Jackman went on to host the 2004 Tony Awards, which earned him his first Emmy Award for Outstanding Individual Performer in a Variety, Musical, or Comedy Program. 2006, Jackman was offered to play James Bond in Casino Royale before the role went to Daniel Craig. According to Jackman, he turned down the opportunity due to his prior commitment to X-Men, and he simply didn't want to be doing two such iconic characters at once. But turning down the role didn't hurt Jackman's career in any way. That same year, he starred alongside Christian Bale, Michael Caine, and Scarlett Johansson in Christopher Nolan's Oscar-nominated thriller, The Prestige. Under the bright lights of the stage, Hugh Jackman becomes Robert Angier, a magician who's easy to hurt and shows his feelings openly. He's happy one moment and down the next, and everything he feels is out there for the world to see. Angier loves magic, but he's also a guy with a lot of pain. He's always trying to be better than his rival, but can't shake off his own problems. Jackman isn't just acting, he's living as Angier, feeling every high and low. And then we have Christian Bale, who's playing Alfred Borden, the guy who's as good at keeping secrets as a locked magic box. He's a magician, sure, but he's also got more drama than a soap opera. Bale doesn't just act as Borden, he disappears into the character, like he's trying to win a game of hide-and-seek with himself. The man's full of mysteries and troubles, and he's making sure we all feel it. Now, here's the kicker. In the movie, they're supposed to be arch enemies, but in real life, they're like two magicians who respect each other a bunch. Every time they face off on screen, it's like a heavyweight magic battle because these guys are going all out. Their acting is not just about reciting lines, it's about making you believe that they're two broken magicians trying to outdo each other in a world that's crazier than a funhouse mirror. Every look, every move, it's all part of their magical plan to suck you into the prestige and never let you go. The Prestige enjoyed solid box office success, grossing over $109 million worldwide. Its blend of mystery, complex characters, and stunning performances by Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale helped the film draw audiences into its intricate world of magic and rivalry. 
solidifying its commercial appeal in addition to its critical acclaim. Jackman continued to prove his versatility as an actor in the 2006 science fiction romance, The Fountain. Two years later, he turned heads in Baz Luhrmann's epic film, Australia, co-starring Nicole Kidman. Jackman reportedly replaced Russell Crowe as the lead, and it was one of the roles that had him pinching himself all the way through the shoot. Regarding Australia, Jackman also said, I'll die a happy man, knowing I've got this film on my CV. After entertaining live audiences with plays like A Steady Rain and the popular concert show, Hugh Jackman, back on Broadway, the Aussie star returned to the big screen in 2011's Real Steel. Its blend of family drama and robot boxing action resonated with audiences, making it one of Hugh Jackman's successful ventures, outside of his iconic Wolverine role in the X-Men franchise. A year later, Jackman starred as Jean Valjean in Tom Hooper's film Adaptation of the stage musical Les Miserables, and later his first Oscar nomination for Best Actor. In 2013, Jackman starred in Prisoners alongside Jake Gyllenhaal. Hugh Jackman delivers a riveting performance as Keller Dover, a disparate father who takes matters into his own hands when his daughter goes missing. Jackman's portrayal is emotionally charged, showcasing his remarkable range as an actor, as he delves deep into the character's anguish, determination, and moral dilemmas. Opposite him, Jake Gyllenhaal shines as Detective Loki, the film's lead investigator. I'm going to find your daughter. Gyllenhaal's depiction of a relentless and dedicated detective adds depth and complexity to the story, creating a compelling dynamic with Jackman's character. Their exceptional performances contribute significantly to the film's tension and emotional impact, making Prisoners a standout thriller in their careers. 2017, the actor took home another Golden Globe following the epic success of The Greatest Showman, his most memorable non-Wolverine effort to date. It was a solid crowd-pleaser, grossing over $400 million worldwide which also makes it the fifth highest grossing musical film of all time. The Greatest Showman soundtrack won numerous awards and an Oscar nomination. Meanwhile, Jackman's portrayal of P.T. Barnum once again cemented his reputation as one of the industry's leading entertainers. In recent years, Jackman has continued his streak with other critically acclaimed films such as Bad Education, which earned him an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor and The Sun, for which he received a Best Actor nomination at the 2022 Golden Globes. But the big screen hasn't been his sole focus. After his first world tour, the man, the music, the show, the Australian legend returned to Broadway in the popular revival of The Music Man. The performance earned Jackman his second nomination for the Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical. Then, of course, there's his production company and multiple philanthropic ventures. Over the years, the actor has donated to and collaborated with numerous NGOs such as Charity, Water, and Operation of Hope. Jackman is also a global advisor of advocacy organizations like the Global Poverty Project and World Vision International. This is just one of the many reasons why Hugh Jackman has enjoyed a reputation as one of Hollywood's nicest A-listers. But even he realizes that there's more to the picture than meets the eye. I'm not always nice. I've had my moments on set for sure when I haven't been nice, and I behave sometimes on set I'm not proud of. The Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winner believes in extending grace to himself and others. Everyone is trying their hardest. And my experience is, if you turn up, you give everything, you act respectfully, then that's generally what you get from other people. Let's remember family, friends, and mentors who influenced us through their passion and wisdom wherever they may be in the world. Because in Hollywood, you don't need money. You can build a dream out of nothing. I'm really trying to sexy this, this thing up now.